Hello, welcome to FMR. My name's Stephen and this is episode three of the Lakeland 100 training series. Today we're going to be delving deep into last week's training and having a closer look at heart rate zones. So before we dive in, if you do find the content useful, if you are enjoying it, please do hit the subscribe button. Much appreciated. Not that far away from 10,000 subscribers now. And also stay tuned to the end because I've got a bit of news about a race that me and Victoria are doing later this week. So why don't we start by having a look at last week's training on Strava. Uh, remember I told you that I was going to build up by doing a few weeks of 100k per week. So five, maybe six weeks of 100k a week. And again, that's what I have done this week. So we started off as last week, the same session as last week. I did this Monday Zwift group run. Uh, it's only 10k. It's a nice, easy, relaxed start to the week. On Tuesday, I did a double day, uh, all on Zwift. So in the morning, I did the film My Run 500, 4.2 kilometers, 500 meters of elevation gained. Uh, in the evening was an easy group run. Uh, and then on Wednesday, uh, I did a double day again, uh, but this time 10 miles outside on my uh, Sisbury loop on the South Downs, uh, and then a group run on Zwift in the evening. So that was 16K in the morning and 8K in the evening. Thursday, just one run on Thursday and very easy day. I just did the film my run 500. So that's my 500 meter climb over 4.2 kilometers. On Friday, I did 13 kilometers on the seafront outdoors. Nice and flat, nice and easy in the sunshine, filming some videos, very nice too. Uh, and then in the evening, I did another Zwift run, 11 kilometers, nice and easy. Uh, you'll notice everything's been pretty easy so far this week. And then I had a rest day on Saturday. Um, the reason I had a rest day was because we were helping out all day at the Thames Path 100, volunteering at one of the aid stations. No time for a run. So I made up for it on Sunday and you can see here on Sunday I did uh, the West Sussex Fun Run League, Hedgehoppers 5. Uh, there is a video of that up there. Uh, you can go and have a look at that. That was my hard effort for the week. So uh, apart from a warm up before that, it was 8.3 kilometers uh, of the Hedgehoppers five miler. Um, bit of elevation up onto the hills, beautiful sunny day as well. Uh, but tried to push my heart rate as hard as it would go. And then immediately following the race, I ran home, which was 21 kilometers. Again, very easy. Actually stopped for ice cream and coffee on the way home. But that made up my 100 kilometers. In fact, it was about 105, nearly 106 kilometers for the week. So that was my weekly mileage. Uh, and you'll notice I've done one, two, three, I've done four double days. So of the six days that I ran, uh, four of those were double days, running in the morning and then in the evening. So running double days, really good for getting you used to running on tired legs, uh, which you will be doing when you do long distance races. So let's dive in a little deeper now. Um, remember I do 80-20 running. So um, ideally, what that means is that 80% of all the runs that I do will be easy, low heart rate, slow tempo runs. And then 20% of my runs ideally should be a harder effort, uh, at least zone four, zone five, really pushing it uh, into um, maximum effort. Now this 80-20 breakdown, uh, I do it in terms of the runs that I do. So 80% of the running that I do, not 80% of my heart rate effort. Um, because say you do an interval run, I would count an interval run as a hard effort. So that would go in that 20%. Uh, but obviously my heart rate isn't going to be in zones four and five for the entire duration of that interval run. In fact, a lot of it will be in zones one, two and three. But just for interest's sake, what I've done today is I have broken down all the runs I've done for the week into percentages for each heart rate zone. Now there's an interesting little side note here uh, with Strava and Garmin, because I actually have different zones for Strava and Garmin. Uh, Strava, I have it set to automatically um, update my zones. So based on my maximum heart rate, uh, it automatically sets my zones for me. Now you can set custom zones in, in Strava if you want to. I just, I've never got around to it, I've never bothered. Now Garmin is a little bit different because Garmin has allowed me to set my heart rate zones using heart rate reserve. 
So Strava just uses max heart rate. Uh, Garmin, I can use my resting heart rate and my max heart rate to set my heart rate zones. Some say it's a little bit more accurate, a little bit more realistic of the effort that you're making. So this is last week's training broken down. So you can see zone one last week, I did 20% of my training in zone one according to Strava. But according to Garmin, I did 45, nearly 46% of my training in zone one. Zone two, I did 70% according to Strava, only 34, 33, 34% according to Garmin. So if I'm working in low heart rate, easy running, all my running uh, for that 80, 20, for the 80 bit of the 20, all my running should be in zones one and two. So you can see here, I've come to about 90% of my runs in zone one and two, according to Strava. According to Garmin, I have done just about 80% of my runs in zone two. This is according to heart rate, not according to the number of runs that I've done. Uh, and then we look at zones four and five. Uh, so zones four and five, according to Strava, I've only done 5% of my running at a hard effort in zones four and five. But according to Garmin, I've done about 10% of my effort in zones four and five. Interesting thing to notice is that with Strava, I've hardly got into zone five at all. 0.14% um, of my running in zone five. Whereas according to Garmin, um, I've done a good five, six percent of my running actually in zone five. And all of that zone five running came in that Hedgehopper's five miler that I did on Sunday. Again, really useful thing to do was to run home after the run. Ran on tired legs, had to motivate myself to get going. This is all about building mental strength, mental stamina to keep moving when you don't want to keep moving. And they always say, don't they, 90% of running is in your head and 10% of it is mental attitude. <laughs> it's a little joke, but basically, you know, when you're running 100 miles, we're saying that m much of that is about how you deal with it up here, not necessarily how you deal with it in your heart or in your legs. So the takeaways from this really for me are, it's important to do double days. It's important to run on tired legs. It's not vitally important that you stick exactly to 80, 20 or to exactly 100 kilometers. As I've said before, as long as I get in around about 100K a week, as long as I do at least one hard effort a week, I'm, I'm fairly satisfied. And as long as I get in a decent amount of elevation. Now, as we get nearer to Lakeland, I will increase the mileage, I will increase the elevation, and I will also, hopefully, I'll try and increase the number of hard efforts that I do, from one to possibly two hard efforts a week. Woohoo! <laughs> so this weekend, Victoria and I were off to Guernsey to run the GU36. It's 36 miles all around the coast of Guernsey, 1,000 or so meters of elevation gain. The first 16 miles of the run are very hilly, gnarly steps, cliffs, beautiful views. Uh, and then the last 20 miles are completely flat around beautiful beaches. Hopefully it's gonna be gorgeous weather. I will be making a video, so make sure to stick around and uh, watch that. That's it from me. If you have found the episode useful, if you've enjoyed it, please do click the like button or click subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Next week on episode four of the Lakeland training series, we'll be looking at nutrition, particularly focusing on things like fat burning, but we can also talk about gels and hydration as well. Take care guys, we'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.